world of advanced social media and the use of internet, a lot of people have benefited from the use of it whilst others are put at risk when it comes to their use of social media and various forms of the internet that um, has become something that we can't do away with. But would we say that girls or women are put at risk more than when it comes to men and the usage of it? Would we say that um, the women themselves have caused their own problems or are putting themselves at risk more? On this episode of Curious Minds podcast, we are looking at cyber violence against women. What are the dangers? What are the actions? And what are the interventions that are needed and efforts to combat violence against women in the cyber spaces? And you are all welcome as my guests are well seated here. My name is Mavis Nakole Ayi, and you can also follow the discussions on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Curious Minds Hyphen Ghana on Twitter at CM Ghana and on Instagram at CM Ghana. It's important that we look at the things that are facing, the things that are bothering our women and girls, especially in the cyberspace, because this is a time when everyone wakes up and social media is the first thing that they are resorting to. When they have to even vent something out, it is what they have to use. And so you are all welcome um, once again. And my guests, can you introduce yourselves? My name is Injo Kujo. Okay, thank you, Injo Kujo, for coming. Yes, I'm Rans for the Usuan song. And? And I'm Samuel Kui, a young person. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for remaining a young person. And so zooming straight into the discussion, we are looking at, when we talk about cyber violence, what does it even mean? What is the situation at hand? What is the state of cyber violence against women? Is it something that is abstract? Or it's really what the people are facing? That's giving practical examples and sharing on few experiences and what the causes are. And then we move on and on. And so starting with um, Ransford, yeah. what, when we talk about cyber violence, what would you say it is about? Okay, so from my perspective, I would say uh, cyber vi uh, violence is defined as um, online behaviors that uh, criminally or non-criminally assault uh, or can lead to assault uh, of a person's physical, psychological, or emotional well-being. Uh, it can also be done or experienced by a group or individual. Uh, and happen they, ha they normally happen online through uh, smartphones or during internet games, etc. So uh, any form of violence, young people, children and young people, uh, I don't want to say especially girls, but yes, especially girls, but children because especially. women and girls are in focus mm -hmm. today. Yes, yeah, so especially girls, are uh, any form of violence, especially girls are exposed to uh, when they use the internet. So, yeah. Sh should we close? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Angel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Angel, could you? Okay, so cyber violence is basically violence on the internet that is anything someone does to make someone feel uncomfortable make someone feel little about themselves any like anything negative being brought to someone on the internet through a mobile phone as transfer said mobile phone or internet usage is cyber violence and then the issue of cyber violence is actually prevalent in the issue of girls and women Women actually face cyber violence more than men or boys. Okay, yeah. let, let's see. Um, at the end of the discussion, we'll find out whether what you're saying is mm -hmm. true or we are just framing something up. So, um, Ransford, can <laughs> yeah. you tell us, um, talking about the situation of cyber violence mm. against women, wh what do we have? Okay, so uh, I have a couple of st uh, statistics here from the Implement Ghana uh, Click Right. Twitter Is storm. It? Yeah, so uh, first of all, we are looking at children aged between 12 and 17. Most of them being exposed to, uh, most of them being bullied online. The percentage being 37% of people, uh, young children and young people between 12 and 17 years who have been bullied online. 30% have even had it happen more than once in their lifetime. And uh, this, looking at something like this, it's, it's, it's a very big issue because if you have 30% of uh, children with smartphones already being bullied more than once online then it, it, it goes to uh, show that the issue we are talking about is not uh, something we have to take lightly and the issue about us, uh, adolescents also being secretive about who they are talking to and whatever goes on online 
uh, when they are on their mobile phones. Okay, I think we'll, we'll even come mm. to that. We'll find out some of the mm. things that um, will help us detect when a woman or a lady is being bullied online yeah. or is experiencing any form of um, cyber violence. But before we even come to that, why would we say there are all these um, causes or women are tend to be facing violence when it comes to the cyber spaces? Is, is it their fault? Are they putting themselves out too much? Or what actually is the situation? And Sami, can you um, help yeah, us um, with this? Generally, women are not that technologically inclined, especially in our settings. I don't know about um, other places, but then in our, our circles, we usually find males to be the most technologically savvy to be the ones who are most interested in gadgets and what have you. Um, unfortunately, because of that, it leaves a lot of ladies exposed to the dangers of internet. Um, a bit of it, which is um, cyber violence that we are discussing right now. And, and unfortunately, because they don't seem to educate themselves or don't seem to have been educated on um, ways in which they can protect themselves online mm. sufficiently, it's it's quite easy for them to fall prey to some of these things. Um, I, I know generally people like to explore. Of course, um, we know ladies who also like to explore a lot more when it comes to certain specific things. And sadly, because of that kind of situation and um, in some cases, the need for some of them to also feel validated or accepted, it leads them into some of these pitfalls and they, they, they get abused or violated online. Okay, so when, a lot of the times, and because we recently celebrated or marked the Media and Information Literacy Week, there were a lot of um, discussions around cyber security and uh, using the internet to even share information or access information. You find out that most women were the ones that are falling prey when it comes to people who have been bullied online or people who have posted illicit photos or having their materials or content shared, whether they posted it themselves or were leaked by some people. But you find out that women were at the vulnerable position when it comes to those things being shared about them. And we'll find out why it is that, because I'm sure not only women do stuff mm. in secret places, but it turns that women have um, theirs posted out there. So, you know, um, Ransford, Mavis, uh, I think the issue is uh, most, most of these young girls, uh, in fact, adolescents in general, do, are not uh, aware of the fact that the internet does not forget illicit photos and okay. videos we upload in the first place, even if we end up deleting them. It might also end up on someone else's uh, device. Uh, device. So uh, in as much as we try as much as possible to leave no traces behind, yes, I feel, why would you post these things there in the first place? You should, first of all, have the, that kind of knowledge that um, even before I'm posting, I should know that the internet does not forget so once I post this, I should know that where I should know where I stand in the next five years, in the next ten years to come. Would I be happy about what I've posted here today? Would I would I come to regret what I've posted here today? We have to know about all these things before we even start doing things. And then even a follow up to what Sami just said, you know, the COVID nineteen plays uh, children and adolescents uh, at high risk of online uh, sexual uh, exploitation and abuse as they move to the online. Yes. Yeah, online spaces, spaces to go and uh, learn or most of the time for academic exercises without enough guidance. Yes, because how many of us can say, maybe even if you were learning online, was your dad there to supervise whatever you were doing online? No. So even if your session, your lecture was two hours, after the two hours, you might probably have been online to do some one or two things. things. Yes, your parents were not there to see the one or two things you were doing. So there was that kind of lack of supervision and even... Uh, more than 1.5 billion, 1.5 billion children and young people who were uh, affected by the school closures were left vulnerable to uh, online sexual ex exploitation and grooming, and uh, it's a it's a very very serious case because if I I don't I don't know, but if I'm a predator and I find something, I'm not saying a predator in the forest, but <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about uh, cyber uh, violence here. So if uh, I'm someone who would want to harm. A, a, a young girl, this, this, this is the best time for me to do that because now we see the numbers rising. 
and it's it's the best time for us to also work hard to prevent these things. So, so like someone would say that um, as we have good people on the internet, so we have bad, bad people, people too on the internet. And so it has to um, caution us to be very mindful of what we are doing and who we are meeting there. And so if you are just joining us, it is the Cyber Violence Against Women edition that um, we have on today's episode of Curious Minds podcast and we are looking at the ways that we can even stop some of these things what is placing women in those vulnerable positions that they are being violated when they are using the cyber spaces or in their use of the internet and other social media networks so talking about the situation or the state of women and um, being violated or women's rights being violated on the internet and um, for you angel have you ever experienced any form of um, violence and um, in the cyber space is talking about someone saying something that puts you in an uncomfortable situation talking about and um, someone saying something you didn't like or someone abusing you in any form have you ever encountered any or heard about any well i have a, encountered a few and then i've heard a lot from other people um Talking about there's something called a clickbait, okay. where you go some like you are online and you are doing your one and two things, mm -hmm. and then this one and two, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? And <laughs> maybe something comes up, like something pops up, like click here. It seems it looks nice, like an so ad or something. Thank you. And then you click it. Well, you want to know what is there. You click it, and then you are taken to a whole new site. Something basa, <laughs> you will not understand, and you'll be like, "Where have I gotten myself into?" Just go back. Mm. Well, go back. <laughs> you can go back, but then it's not right. Why? Why did it pop up in the first place? Oh, what did really? I do to deserve this? Is the sometimes... internet yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then, um, sometimes, um, because we want to explore, we end up in certain places we don't want to go. Sometimes. Someone will just send you something, okay, I heard this and that and that, and send this to 10 people. If you don't send this, you, you will die. die. What? Mm -hmm. Why would you do this? Did you ever try um, not sending? So that... Well, I, I, at first I got scared. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to die. I don't so want to sent. die. So I sent. Okay. But then later on I realized that, ah, why? I've been dying since. You, <laughs> you've been telling me that I'll die, I'll die, I'll die. And you never died. I, no, I never died. I can't <laughs> die like that. And I stopped. But then it's not right because you just put someone... Fear. Yes, in a fearful state. Why will I die? So if I don't get the 10 people to send it to, that means I should get ready to die. No, it's not fair. And then sometimes in other cases, maybe miss someone posts an illicit photo and then someone takes it from the internet. Well, sometimes... We think it's funny as young people. We think mm. it's funny posting certain stuff. But then what may be funny now, as Ransford said, may not be funny in the next five years because at that point, you may come to regret what you posted five years ago. And then it's not right. Sometimes someone takes your photo and then tells you that if you don't give me this, I'll send share. it here, I'll share it here. And then you are put in... A hard place threats. and then you don't know what to do. You have to find this. So you walking around, you are like a ghost because someone says he will share your photo. Sometimes too, <laughs> you meet someone online and then you say you want to meet up just like that. And then you realize that even um, there was one situation, a girl was sharing her story. She was like, she met someone on Facebook and then as time went on, he wanted to offer her a job and all that. So, well, she took it up wanted to meet the person but later on she realized that it wasn't actually a job it was some kind of a harassment mm. it, it became some way for the girl but then luckily she was able to escape and then i was wondering so supposing she wasn't able to escape her situation will be part of the cases as maybe one point what billion people were this and that and that and all that which it makes people hmm, I don't know. Sometimes this is the reason why I don't want to go on the internet. Because so, so it even tells that um, all of these actions or all of these things that people are facing, a, a lot of women and girls may be facing on the internet, deters them from using it, even with all the good opportunities that can be found and leveraged on for development and growth. If you are just joining, it is 
the Cyber Violence Against Women discussions on on today's episode of Curious Minds podcast and it's important that we explore these issues. You can also share your experiences or your comments to our various social media platforms on Facebook, Curious Minds hyphen Ghana, on Twitter at CM Ghana and on Instagram at CM Ghana. Do join us with your experiences. Do join us with your messages and because this is something that we can't do away with as time goes on, as the days go by, we'll continue to use the internet and we'll continue to be on social media but let's look at this sometimes um some would say that why did the person post the illicit photo in the first place if she doesn't want it shared mm. ransford yes i mean i also feel like asking them the same question <laughs> <laughs> yes because why would you post the, the something like that in the first place? i feel it all boils down to education if okay. they've been educated about most of these things they wouldn't uh go about and then be posting all these things a, a lot of you join you are in a group and then someone the admin just comes and then he's like what should we post this evening should we should we post music should we post a video should we post a movie should we oh, post wow. I've never some encountered no I'm, that. yes you haven't encountered yeah. i have encountered a lot should we post then they'll be like should we post someone's leaks and i'm like ah how did someone's leak get to you so even i won't let you learn first and oh. talking about someone's leaks <laughs> is it that they secretly filmed the person or the mm. person intentionally shared to them. Someone mm. will call it inner circle. Mm. Let us keep it in inner circles. I won't let it go viral. Is it that they want to now share it out yeah. of the inner okay. circles? Or what exactly? So uh, the ones I have unfortunately seen. <laughs> uh, most of them, you, you realize the person was aware like this thing is being filmed. Because most of them, it's just that particular person uh, in that particular space. Uh, being videoed or being uh, taking pictures of so most of these people do these things the, themselves they take the videos themselves send it to people of their uh, their yeah, close yes. friends and stuff so say uh, it's not like you do that but okay. you angel uh, probably uh, if someone else is around so maybe the two of you uh, angel does it you also do it you send it to yourselves and then yeah, like it's between the two of you, but probably unfortunately, Angel was trying to send it to you and probably sent it to someone else, and it gets it starts spreading. Cause, so risky. Yes, yeah, very risky. <laughs> Cause, yeah, or in certain cases, maybe you have a beef with um, Angel. Mm, mm, Angel yes. decides to pay back, <laughs> and because of yeah. that payback, like let me release this thing out there to mm. teach the person a, a lesson pay. or something like that. Yes. So m most of the times, as uh, Sami just said, if you and Angel end up having an issue and then an Angel just decides to, okay, I, since I have this video of yours, let me just post it online. And then I send it to people that I know can help me spread the video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, help, help me spread the, spread the video. And then it, it, it it, that, like that, that. that just happens. You would also feel like, okay, Angel has done this. Let me do the same thing to her. Okay. Then you also find it someone higher than... Then it keeps spreading. It keeps spreading. So most of these uh, cases, I feel it's... it's Why? You shouldn't do it in the first place. Because... You can't trust anyone. Anything can happen. So you like, are you like, are probably sending it to Angel and then you end up... Because recently, someone I know uh, who doesn't normally post on uh, his status posted something on his status and we later found out the person was trying to send it to someone. Mm -hmm. So imagine An Angel trying to send it to you and mistakenly sends it... She mistakenly posted it on her status. We all know our friends who use GB WhatsApp. When you delete it, it's still there. It's still there. So <laughs> just imagine. So it even comes back to the fact that because we want validation, because you have a phone, you need to use it yeah. because everyone is using it. But Sami, how damaging are these actions to the people really, who very are very damaging, posting? very very damaging to the extent that some have even con uh, committed suicide because yeah. of search leaks. I mean, how are they going to withstand that kind of pressure when everybody knows? Oh, this Shame. is. Um, in certain cases, it's so bad that. Um, in certain spaces, after the issue had died down, you can't post something online, maybe um, advising people or something, mm -hmm. and then somebody comes to post that mm -hmm. same thing and say, this you, yeah, you the one someone. who posted this thing. And for some, they have lost very good got job opportunities because of this, or very good um, capacity building opportunities because they weren't responsible in their use of social media before. And in certain cases, it had gone on to ruin reputations of not just the persons involved, but even their family and um, those around them. So it's not a, it's not a, a light thing. It's not something we should take lightly. Mm. 
it's it's really serious the the consequences of it are very telling it's it's not something that one would consider and decide let me ignore and go ahead and uh, because i love this guy so much let me just take a video or picture and send to him of my nudes so that um he will be happy because it will prove my love to him no you don't prove your love to somebody <laughs> by sharing nudes to the person mm. it's very excuse me to say stupid and it's 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 high time we we hammered so much on these things on our social spaces for other young ladies who are now coming up to know you you shouldn't feel so inferior that you have to share these things to like to either it. get somebody to love you or to prove to somebody that you love the person no it is not a proof it it has never been a proof of love and it will never <laughs> ever be a proof of love Unfortunately, if you don't take care, That's your so strong. your <laughs> reputation can be ruined doing such a thing. So, um, considering the fact that this one maybe the people themselves are putting themselves out there, how about um persons who tend to be on social media? They have like accepted or they have put themselves there. Yes, I want to harm people. I want to just disturb people, or insult people, verbal verbally abuse people, or bully them. For such people, what what should be done? We call them perpetrators. People have just made up their minds that I want to just make people uncomfortable in their space. What should be done to them? Um, unfortunately, there isn't much legally being done towards such things, and uh, it's it's it transcends just young people or ladies. Um, mm. Very very recently, which was over the course of the week, I saw such an abuse against a former. And British ambassador to Ghana, and it just tells you how far people are willing to go, just to try and be violent online. So, if we are really going to be deliberate about such things, it will mean that the the, the body in charge of of ensuring cybersecurity online needs to be up and doing. It is it is a long way out. It is something that even advanced countries are. Are trying so hard to to fight. Um, the remedies available would be to block the person, to report the person online. If if you are on Twitter, if you are on Facebook, if you are on Instagram, there's the the option of reporting certain accounts that are abusive, and then um, punitive actions can be taken. But then again, it's it also behoves on all of us to make sure that. Um, as far as our reach can go, we make people aware of the fact that um, bullying or assaulting people online, verbally abusing them, is a no-no. And it's punishable by law. If it's not happening today, it doesn't mean um, you can't be sanctioned because of that. All right. Thank you, um, Sami, for um, those insights. It's important that we all take notes and we all are cautious when we come to using our social media or and making good use of the internet. And so for you, Ransford, what mm. would you say that we have to do as young people to tackle the whole issue of cyber violence against women and girls? Okay, so I think as young people, we have to uh, make sure we put an end to some of the things we feel at this particular day and age. We feel it's okay for us because now if I take a, a, an illicit photo of myself, I feel, yeah, I'm, I'm living my life. So, <laughs> yeah, let me feel free. But as young people, we have to be able to educate our fellow young people to know that what, uh, in as much as you want to feel free today, you also have to know that in the next five to ten years, you also want to feel free. So we should try as much as possible to abstain from posting. Why, why would you take a... a, a, a <laughs> why would you take an illicit photo of yourself and send it to someone? I really don't get it. So... And the excuse of trying, I was trying to send it to Mavis and I mistakenly sent it to uh, Patrick. I was trying to send it to Angel and I mistakenly sent it to Charles who already hates me and wants to destroy me. Why Why would you want to send it to, yes, as Sami said, you don't, if uh, you're a lady and you want to uh, prove your love, to, your love to, <laughs> probably <laughs> Angel wants to uh, uh, show Charles that, yes, she really, she re she's really into him. So she took uh, a couple of um, videos and then, uh, sends them to Charles and why, why would you do that in the first place we, if the guy really is interested in you wouldn't ask you to do that so I feel as young people we have to be educated on the effects of all these things and 
in as much as we are being educated, we also have to end up educating our fellow young people out there. Very well. Thank you so much, and Ransford, for those words. And um, Angel, anything to add quickly? I think Ransford has said it all. The education is important. But then even as we are educated and educating other people, we should also put our education into use because someone may have a ton of information on cyber violence and wouldn't want to put it to use because he or she thinks it's funny to post certain things or to send certain things to someone. And so this has been the Cyber Violence Against Women discussion on today's episode of Curious Minds podcast as we looked at the various forms of violence that is meted out to women or the various actions that are violating or abusive towards women. And so as we all have shared our opinions and shared our views, you are also able to share yours via our social media platforms. Facebook, we have Curious Minds in Ghana. On Twitter, we have at CM Ghana, and on Instagram, connect with us at CM Ghana. And my name is Mavis Nakole Ayi as we look at today's topic. And so, the message is that don't consider the internet as a different world. Let's ensure sanity to the comfort of all persons in the cyberspace. There are lots of opportunities. Instead of being the violent person online, be the ones to share opportunities to help in the development and growth of all. Our executive producer has been Kingsley Obintre, and our producer has been Michael Tetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetetet